Hello. Um, today we'll be reading chapter 22 of Bubble. 21 was really great. Um, we got to see Joe enjoy some of his time out with Amir and um, actually get to enjoy being outside. He got to see a airplane take off over his head. He got to see the sunrise. And so now they're on their way back to the hospital. So let's see what happens. Chapter 22. 11 years, 3 months, and 12 days. There are birds tweeting outside my window. They're on the ledge peeking at the glass like they're saying hello and want to come in. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet. The sun is shining through my window onto my bed. The rays soak through my t-shirt onto my skin. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet. A plane flies across the sky. I try to lift my head to see what airline it is, but my head aches and my body is so heavy. It feels like I fell into Mike and Dave's hole and now I'm covered in cement. The sun climbs higher. A plane flies across it. The birds keep tweeting. Am I awake or am I dreaming? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Well, he looks quite rested. I know, it's just that he's been asleep all morning. Another plane takes off inside my head and flies across the sun. Mm, let's look at his readings. I hear footsteps beside my bed. What's this? I open my eyes and sneak a look. Dr. Moore is pointing at my mom monitors. 11 degrees, he says. What's happened there? Oh no, Amir forgot the monitor memory. Greg reaches in front of him and presses the temperature button three times. Sometime after midnight, he says. They both look up at the air vent. Best get it checked, doc says Dr. Moore. But apart from that, well, his temperature is up a little, but there's a little, but there's little else to cause concern. They turn around and catch me looking. Ah, there he is, says Dr. Moore. He was listening all this time. How are you doing, young man? I'm okay, just tired. Did the cold keep you awake? I shake my head quickly. No, I didn't notice the cold. I had covers on all night. Dr. Moore looks up on the top of his glasses at my screens. Mm, maybe you're tired because you're watching all those all the time. I've not been watching them much. Greg pretends to cough. Well, I've watched them a bit. How about we give them a rest just for a day? I tell him I need to watch Henry, but I'm so tired all I do is nod. Dr. Moore looks at Greg. He seems okay, but let's increase his fluids and keep monitoring. Greg says something I can't hear. The voices fade as I walk through the door. A wave of energy runs through my body. I put my hand on my head. I've been outside. I can't believe I did it. I've seen the sky and the sun and the moon without even having looked through the glass. I've seen all the buildings. I've seen the river. I've seen the motorway. I look toward the door. I want to tell Greg and Dr. Moore. I want to stand up on my sh on my bed and shout, I've been outside. I've seen the sun. I've watched the planes take off and land at Heathrow. Shall I do it? I could do it now. I'm going to do it. Hey, I've been outside. I've been in a car. I went to an airport and saw the moon and the stars. No. I can't tell them. I can't tell anyone. It's like I won the lottery but can't go shopping. You okay, Joe, says Dr. Moore. I put my hand on my mouth in case my words jump out. I nod. You don't feel sick? No, I'm okay. He whispers something to Greg and they walk through the transition zone. I look up at the ceiling and I can't stop grinning. Did I really do it? I haven't got proof. I didn't go to the shop or buy a so souvenir or a postcard. I didn't put a stone in my pocket or pick up a blade of grass. I didn't even remember to my phone to take pictures of the planes. I wish I had. I don't have any proof at all. Amir took my suit and my helmet with him. He made me shower to wash the chalk off my skin like it never happened. Amir said if it were a dream, I would be the only one who would know. I don't think it was a dream, was it? It couldn't have been. It couldn't have been a dream. That felt real. I close my eyes. Another plane crosses the sun. I roll over to my side, reach out, and check the time. It's 1.03 p.m. in London. And it's 8.03 a.m. in Philadelphia. Henry will have eaten his breakfast already. If he wasn't resting, I could send him a message. I'll tell him that if it was okay to put that I was okay in my suit, I'm sure he'll be okay in his. I don't want to spoil his excitement. My phone buzzes by my side. Pick it up. Hey, Joe, still seeing planes? I slide down and pull my covers over my head. Amir, how do you know? I thought maybe they stay in your head like aliens stay in mine. I smile. Amir, I'm so happy. Then I happy too. I just text to check you okay. I'm tired. Me too. You should sleep. I will, but I have to watch Henry. Set alarm on phone. I will. I hear Greg's voice getting louder. Think Greg's coming back. Okay, I go. I see you Thursday. Okay, delete these messages. I will. Amir, thank you. You deserve. Hope you find crop circles. Me too. I send you pictures. The door opens. Greg walks around the bo bottom of my bed. I slide my phone under my pillow and pretend I've been sleeping. I hate not being able to tell him what I've done because I tell him everything. He'd be really pleased if he knew how happy I was. 
<coughs> Excuse me, I have allergies. Maybe I can tell him one day when I've been fixed for good. I could meet him at the park and, and lunch hour and we could sit on a bench. I'd tell him I was working for Marvel Comics and he would ask me for free copies. I'd meet him every week and eventually one day I would tell him I'd been outside when I was ill. No one would get it in trouble then. It would be too long since it happened. Amir could get fired if they found out next week or next month. I've seen people on TV. Sometimes people get caught and they get sent to prison for years if they've committed a crime. Amir hasn't committed a real crime. He hasn't killed anyone or stolen anything. But some people may have think he kidnapped me. But he brought me back. They could send him to prison for doing that, can they? I hear Greg's, Greg's footsteps fade away. I reach under my pillow and set my alarm. Then I write a message on a piece of paper. Greg, come back at 8 o'clock and we can watch Henry on TV. I fold up the paper so it stands up on the end of my bed. I lay back on my pillow. I've been outside. I've been outside. I close my eyes. Another plane goes across the sun. Going outside wasn't a dream. I've never had a dream as good as that. Mate, wake up. I open my eyes. All I can see are flashing green lights and dark shadows. Mate. Greg puts his hands on the shoulders and rocks me. Joe. Greg's standing beside me in the remote control in his hands. Past eight. I try to blink myself away. It can't be. I set my... I left you a message. I'm sorry. I've been busy. Amir isn't here and I don't know how to turn this thing on. I push myself up, my, up on my bed. I'm half an hour late. Henry's longest walk lasted 45 minutes. He'll be nearly finished by now. He'll be on his way back into town. I press the remote. The screens flash on, but too many options, too many channels. If only Amir was here to do it. I press the red start button. All the screens go fuzzy as the decoder searches for the satellite. A man rides a camel in the desert. A woman rows a boat in the ocean. A man throws a dart against a board. Where is Henry? Amir, why did you get me so many channels? Greg looks around the room. Mate, did he leave any instructions? It's okay, I say. I think I can do it. I select Astra Satellite, then Region 57. The names are of all American states scroll up on the screen. My hands are shaking. I scroll down to Pennsylvania and select the cable 121. Ha, huh, there he is. Greg points at the screens. Live. Bubble Boy at King of Prussia Shopping Mall. Brought to you by Live WCTI TV. A rush of excitement goes to my stomach, but I can't help myself from smiling. All the screens is a picture of a boy in a spacesuit walking past a fountain. It's Henry. The three cameramen walk behind him. Another walk in front of him. Photographers run around him taking pictures, and a woman with red hair talks in a microphone. Here he goes, she says, after spending all his life in a bubble, Henry Thomas gets to go outside. The crowds are so noisy I can barely hear myself speak. Just listen to them. She holds the microphone up. Go, Henry, go! Go, Henry, go! The crowd chants. The reporter steps out of the way and the camera follows Henry through the mall. Boys and girls wave flags above their heads and blow whistles. Men and women smile and clap their hands and Henry leads the way, taking slow steps like he's walking on the moon. Wow, I look at Greg. This is more exciting than watching the FA Cup final on TV. Greg laughs. Goosebumps crawl up my arms, cover my whole body. The camera zooms in. Henry's white suit fills my screens. As he walks and creases with his arms and his legs bend, he's so big. It's like I'm walking with him. His name is written in blue on his chest pocket. NASA is written on his arm. He lifts and waves to the crowd again. I turn the volume up. Go, Henry, go! Go, Henry, go! The crowds chant, and I want to chant with them. Children run around Henry carrying red and white balloons. They let go of them. They float up into the sky. Henry's mom and Matt are walking beside him, talking and laughing. Henry takes a step sideways and trips Matt up. Ha, he told me he would do that. Greg smiles. I cough. My throat feels like I've got something stuck in it. I cough again. Greg puts his hand on my back and asks me if I'm okay. I nod and he hands me a glass of water. I take a sip and hold up the glass. What's wrong, mate? Nothing, I say. I swallow. I don't tell Greg I think I can taste metal. And here we go, says reporter. The bubble boy enters the King of Prussia shopping mall. The mall doors slide open and Henry walks through and the cameras follow him inside. People come out of stores with shopping bags in their hand. Nike, Levi's, and Skechers. And I try to give them to Henry. The security guard takes the bags and they hand them to another person who walks behind him. It's like Henry's got his birthday and Christmas at the same time. A remote control car races across the floor and crashes into his boot. A boy in the red radio shack polo shirt jumps past the security guards and holds up the controls. I think Henry shrugs. His gloves are too thick to operate the controls. He turns and looks at Matt. Matt runs over and picks up the car. The boy hands him the remote, then fist bumps Henry. I laugh. He's having fun, I say. And now time for a break, says the reporter. The picture changes. News from our sponsors. News from our sponsors. I watch a commercial of a man trying to eat a donut while he bounces up and down on a trampoline. Amir might not have been taking me me to the mall, but at least we didn't get interrupted by commercials. My trip outside was so different. Me and Amir went into an old beat-up car. Henry got a limo and was surrounded by people like he's a movie star. 
I'd love to have gone to the mall and gotten presents too. I'd love to go to a forbidden planet and buy lots of t-shirts and comics. I put on t-shirts on a straightaway and read comics in the Rainforest Cafe. I'd like to meet lots of people like Henry has, but Henry would like to see the moon and stars in the plains like I did. It means we've got lots to chat about. My legs are starting to ache and my hands are shaking. Greg stands by my side and asks me if I'm okay. I tell him I feel a little bit dizzy, but I don't want to miss Henry. He tells me I won't and leads me to my bed. The picture flickers. Henry is back on the screen. He's sitting down on a chair outside of a table outside of Starbucks. The camera zooms in Henry's helmet, and the cameraman is reflected in the glass. A woman walks over to Henry and hands him a brown paper bag and a co cup of coffee. He holds the cup up to his mouth and pretends to drink it. Everyone laughs. I laugh, too. I think this is how much Henry would like to do it for real, but he doesn't seem to mind. Henry's just taking a rest here in Starbucks, says the reporter. Let's see if we can get a word. She we weaves her way through the crowd as security guard blocks her way. No, ma'am, he says. Not now, maybe later. He looks over his shoulder. Henry's only been sitting for two moments, but he's already being on the move. He needs to rest. Yeah, mate, maybe they're thinking about the time. Matt runs in front of Henry and grabs hold of his hand. He points ahead. They walk toward an escalator. The photographers run ahead, get on backward, and take pictures as Henry gets on. He's smiling and his eyes are shining. It's like he's looking right at me. He opens his mouth and makes a shape like an O. I think he said my name. Yeah, says Greg. I think he did, mate. Henry lifts his hand and points to the massive sign on the writing, Food Hall. I knew it. I point my hands on, the, on my head. Then I cough and taste metal again. Henry walks past Burger King, Snack Shack, and other shops serving Chinese food and pizzas. People are sitting on silver chairs and silver tables. They stop eating as Henry walks by. Some of them stand up and clap. The rest smile and wave. Henry stops and put his hands on his head. I don't think he believes what's happening, says the reporter. He's having so much fun. He wants to soak up every minute. Greg? Yes, mate? I think something's wrong. He's having a rest, mate. No, I think Henry's mom says something to him and signals for one of the nurses to come. Maybe he just needs some water, says Greg. No, his drink is built into his suit. Greg shrugs. Then I don't know, mate. Henry's mom and the nurse lead him to the chair. The reporter pushes her away from the cameras and holds out her microphone. Henry, you must be one happy guy. The camera zooms in Henry's face. He smiles, but I think he's smiling for the cameras. That's not how he smiles at me on Skype. Just a few words. Henry's mouth opens, but he looks too tired to speak. Something's wrong. I know it. I look at the time. I try to work out when Henry has been outside, but I'm too worried to concentrate. I get off my bed and walk up to the screen. Henry, what's wrong? Two nurses are bending down by Henry's side. They're talking to him, but I don't think he replies. He doesn't even lift his arm or move his head. More nurses arrive with medical cases and two paramedics carrying a stretcher. Henry's head falls forward in his helmet like it's too heavy. Maybe his blood count isn't right. Maybe his air is too pure. But NASA would have checked that, wouldn't they? A man puts his arm around Matt and leads him out of the way. My heart thuds and I feel a lump in my throat. A policeman with a gun on his hip. It holds up his hands and walks toward the camera. Henry slumps forward. His suit crumples like all the energy has gone out of him, like someone has walked up behind him and pulled out the valve. Greg, what's wrong with him? He doesn't look. I screw up my face as the pain shoots through my head. Mate, what's up? I hold my hand up to my head. The pain shoots again. It's like an ice cream headache, but I haven't eaten any. My monitor starts to beat faster. The rim starts to spin. Round and round, faster and faster. Like Henry's flying around a machine. Greg's standing over me. He's spinning around, too. Greg, I don't feel well. I can taste metal. My head f falls back on my pillow. Sweat runs down my neck. You okay, mate? Take it easy. I'm here. Greg, I don't... Mate, Joe. <laughs> Greg reaches over me and presses the emergency button. The world turns black. Um, so that's the end of this chapter. This is my cat, Snickers. She decided to join us in this little video here. Um, so it sounds like both Joe and Henry aren't feeling so great um and they've both been out of their room so I'm just wondering if maybe it's a reaction to not being in their safe environment it's too bad since um they're both looking forward to it so I am excited to read chapter 23 and I hope they both start to feel better